Okay, the next thing we're going to model is the gatehouse. And we're going to use the lookout tower as one of the parts of the gatehouse. And we're going to start with that. So we're going to move these, merge the points, which I didn't do last time, and just move it down a bit. So it's not as tall as a lookout tower. And we're going to move this over just a bit. And work out the rough shape of it. And find out how tall that is, because we want our gatehouse to be taller than the concentric wall. Okay, that looks good. Okay, we're going to mirror over the lookout tower. And that's spaced apart a little far, so we're going to move it in just a little and mirror it again. Eh, too much. There we go, that's good. Okay, and then we're going to put those in a background layer, and we're going to create a box from the center of this tower to the center of this one, or approximately the center. And right up to about there is good. Because we don't want the merlins of the gatehouse along the top to conflict with the tilt we have going on here. Okay, and that looks good. I'm going to pull that forward just a bit. And now we still have our archer loops here on both part of the towers, but where we're going to put the merlins, we'll cover that up so we won't have to worry about seeing it. And we still have these ones on the sides, which can be used. So the first thing we're going to do is start modeling the merlins for the top here, and we're just going to use this part of the tower, the tower merlins, for our shape again. Mirror it over, and then, well, that's not quite in the center. And I'll move that over so it's centered. And that looks good. We'll delete these right now. And we're going to go ahead and add the arrow loops. And for this, we're just going to use one in the center. You could add more if you like, but right now we're just going to use one. Okay, so that's cutting plane. Delete. Oh, make sure this cut through all the way. And it did. And we're going to add that angle as we did before in some of them. So it's up just a little bit higher. Let me move this up. And we're going to delete the cutting plane. We're going to go in and we're going to bevel it all at once after we merge. That was strange. And strange stuff always seems to happen when you're using light wave. But that's okay. Knowing how to get around it is always a good thing. And it's really not that hard to get around some of the things that tend to screw up. Okay, now we're going to merge these, or mirror them. And 
copy and paste and bring it over. Uh, we don't have that centered. So what we're going to do is just grab these and move it over. And we'll just do that for the other ones. We'll see how that looks. And that looks pretty good. And we're not going to worry about adding the accents here on the top of the gate and the back of the Merlins. Okay, and now we're going to use the Actually, we're going to make the gate not so far back. I'll work it in just a little, because we're not going to have towers in the back. This is all just going to have merlins along the top, and a little bit of tilt inward. Actually, I think we're just going to tilt the front and leave the back where it is. What we're going to do... Is knife it up a little higher and then knife it again and just pull these polygons in it should still be covering up the archer hole Like I said, you can add a lot more detail to this, but right now, for the tutorial so we don't make it too long, we are just going to do some simple stuff. We're going to add a box right here, just for a little more detail. And give it a bevel. And then we want to add the corvals. Let's select that from the edge here. We just want one set. We'll copy and paste it. And pull it down. center that actually and we're gonna move this one over so it's underneath the other Merlin and then mirror that over and now we have our corbels for the front And that part's done right there, so now we're going to start adding the rest of the merlins along the top of the wall. Just copy and paste one of those. Rotate it 90 degrees. Bring it right up against that tower so that we're covering up the arrow loop. And now we're going to space these out. And 
Actually, we do need to pull the gate house back just a little, just so we can match up with the Merlins. Oh, and there's one thing I wanted to say before. If you are creating a gatehouse with round towers, um, a really quick and easy trick for it is to just create one tower. And the reason for that and is well, create and create one tower on one layer. And the reason for that is in layout later you can just clone it and pull it over to match the other side. And the reason for that is if you have two circular towers, um, they'll have to be surfaced um, with separate surface names because they'll be doing a lot of cylindrical and spherical mapping uh, along something that is uh, of the, the circular towers, the round towers. So if you're going to create a round tower, create one, make sure it's on a separate layer from the actual gate, and then when you're in layout, you clone it and you pull it over, and that way you do not have to texture each tower with its own surfaces. Um, I mean, you could just copy them over and paste them, but it saves a lot of time just being able to clone it and pull it over. And if you had two circular towers with the same on the same layer, same surfaces, um, what it's going to do is calculate like if this was round and you put a uh, cylindrical map on it to put the stones going up, it's going to map around both of them and they're going to stretch out and look really weird. So it's the best thing just to clone it over. But we're using the square towers right now so we don't have to really deal with that because we're going to use mostly uh, cubic mapping for everything. Alright, we're going to get back to the Merlins. Okay, we're going to go ahead and mirror those over, and then copy and paste, rotate. We're going to actually space these out because we don't want to have to resize the tower again. I uh, still have some selected. Okay, we're going to delete these and we're going to pull this, these over so they match up in the corners and we can create our corner pieces. These aren't the exact ones we'll be using, but we can use them as a template for right now. We'll mirror that over. And that's going to be a little bit tighter, but I'm not really going to worry about it right now. Okay, now we have to do the corner pieces, so what we're going to do is just delete... Well, before we delete these, we're going to use them as templates. And we'll just create our Merlin again. And then copy and paste and rotate around. I actually have this one facing the wrong way. We go. Okay, now we can delete the Merlin corner pieces. Okay, we're going to use the knife tool again. Let's do this in full view. And you want to keep it ex 
as exact as you can get it. It's not going to be perfect. It's, this isn't a very precise method, but it is rather quick. And you just want to try to get it on the corner as much as possible, and that looks really good. So we're just going to let that go. And we want to knife it down that line. And it looks about exact. And now we can delete these top pieces. And merge. And we're going to do a full bevel. Oops. And... Ah, okay. Won't quite do a full bevel on this because we did split the polygons in back here. And what we're going to do, we're just going to fix that because it'll decrease the amount of geometry we're using. And all we have to do is do uh, merge polys. And that, and that is Shift Z, or you can go to Detail and merge the polys. You select as many as you want. We're just selecting two. And actually, we can delete these bottom ones because we won't need them. And we have these inside ones we won't need either. And you can go back and clean up your model on the other one and do the same thing if you like. And now we can do a full bevel on this and not have to worry about getting those other sections in there. And that looks pretty good. And these we're not going to worry about adding archer loops or the arrow loops to. To save time. <laughs> And we'll mirror that over. And there we have the back parts done. Okay, and now we're going to work on the allure. Or the walk for the top. And we're going to do the same method we were doing before, which is the bevel. Bevel it inward with no inset. And then a small one so we get that nice accent. And then the main one. And then one more. And zoom in a little for that. There, and now we have our top walk. And we're going to surface that. Actually, we're going to go back and surface everything because we have to change the names here. Even on the towers. And gate tower allure. Actually, um, we're going to be using pretty much the same surface for just about everything uh, here. Uh, the round towers are going to have to be changed a bit, and certain parts of the gatehouse. But actually, we can keep the same surfaces on these because um, they're approximately the same size, and there really doesn't need any, be any major changes to it. This we are going to surface, though, as the gate. And we're just going to call it main, and we'll change that to gate main lore and then gate merlins gate front strip actually we'll call it strip front And then we give this the Merlin. And these will have the Merlins. Okay, and we also want to add uh, an edge around here. 
in the back of the gate. The exact same as this one. So we're just going to use that and we're going to copy it, paste it. And pull it out just a little. And then make sure. come out too far. Alright. Copy and paste again. Rotate. And just move that into place. And we're going to leave just a, that little bit of the, the edges butting up, which is okay. Okay, the gatehouse is almost done. The next thing we're going to add is the actual door. And which is actually going to be a walkway through the entire gatehouse. And we're going to do it creating the gate like we, or the doors or windows like we did earlier. And we're going to start out by creating a disk. And kill the polygon. Select these top two points here, copy and paste them down. And we want to go below the actual bottom of the gates so for doing the boolean and cutting all the way through. And that's a bit large. If you look at the actual proportion of the castle and how big a person is going to be. So we just want enough for horses and stuff to get through, but not too large. Use the extrude tool, go out throughout the span of the gatehouse, and just subtract. Alright, and now we're going to give this a service name um, separate from the actual gatehouse because we might need to do a different type of mapping on it. Oh, we're going to call it gate, and then we're going to call it walkway. And we might make it just a little bit bigger. Undo. Make sure we merge the points. And that looks pretty good. And now we're going to add that trimmer on the edges. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. Create the disk. Kill the polygon. And we need to stretch that out just a little. Grab these points, copy and paste them. There we go. And we'll extrude that. And we're just going to have it going throughout the length and the inside. We're going to copy and then paste that again and make our cutting tool. And then we just want to clip it just a little tiny bit. 
the inside, but not too much. Pull that polygon down. And we have to flip this, because when I extruded it, I extruded it the wrong way. Flip that as well. Now we can boolean subtract that. And we got kind of a strange effect here. Let me see what happened. Oh, okay. I'm gonna make it just a bit wider. There we go. We'll see how that looks. That yeah, looks pretty good. And what we're gonna do is bevel this edge and this edge so that we pick up extra light and we're going to do it a little bit more than usual and we're going to call this walkway trim and actually we probably won't even see that other walkway texture And there we have it coming out on both sides, and we can bring that in a little more. So it's not sticking out too much. And this front one will actually bring in a little. There we go. And the last thing we're going to add to it is the actual gate itself, which is just going to be on one side. And we're just going to do something simple. And we're just going to use the disk tool. And create bars. And that's a bit much, so we're just going to pull them in just a little. Now you could use the box tool for this too, if you're going to be far away, or if you're doing this for game design, I would uh, suggest even using just a clip map for this. Okay, and I'm going to copy and paste. And bring it over as equal as we can. And we'll center it when we're done. There we go. And now we have to do the other direction. And grabbed our viewport there. And it's okay if the poles go through because you won't see them. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add points on the bottom here of this gate. And we're just going to use the bubble tool. So much. And so it's nice and sharp, like you'll see. And we'll call it gate. And now we can cut and paste everything into the same layer. Except maybe the gate if you wanted to animate it. In this case, we're not going to be animating it, so we're just going to leave it where it's at. And we're going to pull it up a bit higher, so it doesn't look like it's closed. So it's just hanging above, ready to be closed if anyone starts attacking. Now I could also, also add windows to this as we did before, or add um, any archer loops or arrow loops. But we're going to leave it pretty much how it is right now. Because uh, most gatehouses will not have windows or anything like that. And we're going to go ahead and save it, and we're just going to call it gatehouse. And there we go.